We'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance and prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the safety that you brought each and every one of us here tonight. I pray, Lord, that your blessing be upon this city, be upon the workers, the public safety officials. And I pray, Lord, that as we conduct our meeting tonight, that we always remember that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart always be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name, amen. 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 All right, uh, we have quorum tonight. Councillor Freeman is uh, via Zoom, and uh, Councillor che um, Chavis is not with us tonight. Uh, so next on the agenda is comments of council members and special rec recognitions or resolutions. Do we have any? First, I would like to start off by saying, um, if we take a few minutes of silence, for our dearly departed Sheriff Frank Anderson that expired and went on on Saturday. And hopefully we can, as um, him being a Lawrence City uh, residence, we could do a resolution in his name in the future. Thank you. Well, a few moments of silence. other counselors I have um, a two. Uh, yes so first I would like to recognize off of um, 42nd and post is the Lawrence Church of God they are doing a program where there is a um, it's a box kind of like it looks like a toll booth it's a yellow toll booth but it's open for community members to be able to come and get um, non-perishable food items at their will um, and it's just a really neat program that they started and um, I've noticed that when you drive down post road and it's just open for all of the community and it's just neat for the community to know that that is available um, at their leisure and it's through their caring center that they provide um, and it's just it's constantly restocked and I know that their children's ministry is also getting involved with stocking it and stuff. So it's just a really neat program that I wanted to recognize. Um, and the other thing I would like to also um, say is uh, I have had a couple constituents address, um, call me this week, and there's some concerns in regards to the paving in the roads in um, Geist Valley Estates. There's a lot of, um, I mean, and nicest way to say it is craters. <laughs> um, and I know that this is a problem for a lot of people, but um, there have been a lot of reports that have been put into the system that have not been acknowledged yet, and it's been going on for a couple years. Um, again, I know a lot of people are going through this, but I just wanted to make sure that I made it that known and that I'm going to also be putting um, more notes and try to put in, go through and put it in the system again. Um, but just if somebody from the administration um, can make note of that, just that we can kind of get some of these addressed because they're getting very large and hard to get around. So thank you. Any other comments of council? Councilor Denny. Uh, Councilor Wells and then Councilor Shevlet. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't see you, Tony. Go ahead. Thank you. I have a few things. Uh, First, I uh, would like to thank the, uh, the bus garage uh, gentleman in charge, and I forgive him for not having his name uh, misplaced it, but he is the assistant director of transportation at the, the new <coughs> bus garage, and uh, over on 52nd Street, I had constituents complaining about uh, they were blowing their horns, the buses were, and you can imagine 200 and some buses blowing their horns when they were going backwards. And uh, we had a long conversation and uh, they said that uh, it was a safety concern uh, to make sure if anybody, anybody know that they're backing up. And uh, so they decided that they'll utilize the uh, cameras and uh, on the buses and then uh, they would no longer do the horn blowing thing and they, have restricted immensely. I've had uh, uh, the neighbors that were complaining call me and said it's uh, way better. So I would just like to uh, express a thanks to them. 
and uh, because they did say they wanted to be good neighbors and apparently that's what they're trying to do. And uh, another thing, I see that uh, our park director is in the audience and, uh, can't hide Eric, um, went to the uh, uh, softball opening Saturday and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was great seeing these little guys out there and they were just, uh, I mean, they're all in it 100%. I guess my question is, would it be possible for next year that maybe we could at least block off the street in the park so they actually have a road they could parade down instead of just that path? Um, just a thought. And I asked some of the people that were there what they thought about it, and they thought it would be great, and I'm just not sure why it never did uh, go any further than that. But uh, anyhow, if there's anything I can do as a counselor to help promote that, I think it would be great because I think the kids, I mean, there was a bunch of kids there and uh, that path is kind of short. So uh, it gave them a little more distance and a little more space to parade. And also, finally, I just wanted to show everybody real quickly, Mayor Collier gave me this and it's uh, framed resolution eight uh, honoring my sister, Linda Treat, counselor uh, that passed away. And uh, thanks to uh, the mayor and his staff. Greatly appreciated. Nice. Thank you, Councillor Wells. Councillor Shevlock. <laughs> Councillor Russell reminded me, uh, I've had a, a couple of people in my district ask me about 79th Street from Fall Creek to Sunnyside, which is not technically the responsibility of the city of Lawrence, but hats off to the city of Lawrence for the last three years that have managed and maintained and tried to patch that. But uh, in talking with Allie Brown, who is the Indianapolis city councilor for that district, which uh, Indianapolis has a, a purview over that, she'd indicated to me that that is on the list for the DOT to have it repaved from uh, Fall Creek at the intersection of Fall Creek and 79th all the way to Sunnyside. Awesome. Thank you for that update. I'm looking on the screen. I see yeah, yeah. there has a... Councillor Denny, I have one more. Um, uh, I would just like to... Councillor Russell. <laughs> um, is it chair or is it, how do I address him? Is You're it, fine. Oh, chair, sorry. Um, I just also wanted to congratulate Lawrence North Musical Theater Department. This past weekend, they just performed uh, Chicago the Musical, and this was a really awesome production that really debuted and... Um, showcased a lot of the talent that is in our city and our teenagers that are in our city. Um, and they just did a very fantastic job um, just engaging the community. They had, they included the art department, they included the band and orchestra. It just was a wonderful experience. And I just wanted to say kudos to the, to the school because they did a really good job. Did they call you out of retirement to perform? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. And the other counselors? And I would just add one last comment, kind of piggybacking on Councillor Wells. Uh, this weekend on Saturday, I think the, the activities on the park started around 9.30 and, you know, at Community Park and just continued all day at the Cultural Campus, Explorer Park. Lots of our different parks this weekend were utilized. It was nice to see families and, and friends back out in the community able to get outside and, and do some of these activities we, we so greatly missed in, in our Lawrence community. So thank you to all our park directors here for uh, getting that together and, and helping our families to do that. All right, so next on our agenda is approval of minutes of regular meetings of April 4th, 2022 and April 20th, 2022. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. It's been motioned and uh, second, and we have one counselor on uh, Zoom today, so we'll do a roll call vote. So I'll start, counselor, oh, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll start with a roll call vote. Counselor Russell? Yes. Counselor Giles? Yes. Counselor Shevlot? Yes. Counselor Wells? Yes. Counselor Rusamoroff? Yes. Counselor Whitfield? Yes. Counselor Freeman? Yes. Councillor Denny, yes. That's approved, 9-0. Or 8-0, excuse me, yes. 
I'm used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so next on the agenda is signing of vouchers, approval of claims, and authorization of payment for April 20th, 2022 and May 2nd, 2022. <coughs> is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Thank you, sir. The approval of claims has been motioned and seconded. Any seconded. Did Councilor Russell. Mm. Any discussion? I have one question. And Chief, I don't mean to put you on the, the spot tonight. On Chief. previously, uh, Chief, uh, Mr. Hoffman. <laughs> Previously, in our, our vouchers, you'd in, there's a gun buyback that's in there, and I believe that pertains specifically to the officers. It's not a gun buyback program. And you had addressed this a year ago prior to your retirement, and I just want to ask if that's the same. And I'm assuming it is, and I I'm apologize. I'm putting you on the, the spot that's for that. Fine. It really is a question for Chief Woodruff at this yes, time. Yes, it is. But I can clarify, it's not a community gun buyback program that has been so often criticized nationally. It's just uh, uh, has to do with uh, the Lawrence Police Department upgrading their uh, duty issued firearms and allowing officers to purchase their, um, <clears throat> their old duty firearms rather than uh, sending, them, sending them back to the dealer. Yeah. So probably a phraseology issue there, uh, right. semantics on that. It's not a, everyone thinks of a gun buyback as, as kind of a controversial um, mm -hmm. violence reduction program. Right. Thank you. I knew you had answered that question previously is why I yes, directed sir. it to you. Fine. Thank you. They, and I wanted to clarify that for the community if they were reading through the vouchers and, and saw that point. All right. Same. Um, if there's no further discussion, I'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Russell? Yes. Councillor Giles? Yes. <clears throat> Councillor Shevlock? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Councillor Rusomorov? Yes. Councillor Whitfield? Yes. Councillor Freeman? Yes. Councillor Denny? Yes. Those vouchers are approved, 8 0. So, next on the agenda is reports of committee finance. And we just had the finance committee previous to this, so I will kind of give updates on the two items <coughs> as uh, we hit them here through our unfinished business. So, proposal number 10 2022 is unfinished business appropriating additional funds. And amend, oh, are you supposed to read it? Okay. This is the first time I'm doing the, the full meeting, so I apologize for a little hiccup there. Proposal number 10, 2022, appropriating additional funds and amending the 2022 budget as approved by the Common Council with respect to the Stormwater Fund. Uh, that requires a public hearing, which will be uh, scheduled and noticed. And then uh, proposal number 11, and appropriating additional funds and amending the 2022 budget with respect to the general fund. That was amended by the, in the finance committee and, re, and the amended version was recommended out to the council, which will also take a, um, a public hearing. And then resolution number nine, 2022, approving the issuance of stormwater revenue bonds of the city of Lawrence stormwater management district and matters related thereto is still in finance. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone there. I did our unfinished business and reports of the finance committee. It's a new business. And this one, if you don't mind. <coughs> resolution 10, 2022, introduced by Councilors Chavis and Denny, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of Lawrence, Indiana, approving the Blink Law Firm LLC contracts for 2022 redistricting legal and consulting services. Thank you. So this is a, a resolution, as you know, by uh, this November, I believe the, just to give you some background, is the law when we have to have this redistrict. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Councilor Wheeler, Wheeler on that. Um, and so this does it for the city of Lawrence and allows for the redistricting based upon the current census. And so I think we can vote on this tonight. Changes to a district have to have, with some exceptions, but generally speaking, to be constitutional, have to have roughly. 
roughly equivalent population in each district, to be fair and not be upheld. Question. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Growth is experienced in this area, having done it for other municipalities. This doesn't have to be assigned to finance. No, we can vote on this tonight. On this. So if there's a motion, um, we can entertain this and vote on it tonight. I'll make a motion to approve. There's a motion to approve by Councilor Rusomaroff. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Councillor Giles. Any discussion? I have a question. I was reading through the document that was sent out about the scope of work. Uh, I know Indianapolis did this, but I didn't see this in there. I may have missed it, but is part of the scope of work going to uh, involve community input? Where they would, like for example, in, the, in Indianapolis, they went out into some of the districts and they met in townships to to talk about maps and everything. Is that included in this scope of work where that, where this law firm will go out into our districts and have public meetings so constituents know in, in the event that their district might change? Because I remember doing this in 12 and um, it was 10 years ago, but, but that was pretty key for us to be able to go out into the district to provide to provide an opportunity for constituents to come in here. Here's what the proposed maps might look like so they're prepared come election in 2023. So can you answer that or? So that, those public meetings are required by state law, so they will happen. I don't think they're intended to be included in this part of the contract. Okay. His job is to bring you the maps and then it essentially becomes the council's job to then schedule those meetings Got it. and meet all of the statutory requirements, either amend the map based yep. on the feedback. Okay. But does that make sense? It does. I told you it's been 10 years. Yeah. I couldn't remember the actual sequence of events have happened, but I just want to make sure community Absolutely. involvement. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is just to start that process exactly. then? Okay. So that's not going for it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Any follow on discussion? Okay, it has been motion and second, and also I'll do the, see no more discussion, I'll do the roll call vote. Councillor Russell? Yes. Councillor Giles? Yes. Councillor Shedlock? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Councillor Russomoroff? Yes. Councillor Whitfield? Yes. Councillor Freeman? Can't hear you. Oh, I don't <laughs> Councillor Freeman? I don't know if she heard her. I think she's trying to unmute. She on mute. Oh, I think she's still on mute. Sharon, are you there? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Councillor Denny. Yes. <laughs> Great. So that passes um, eight zero. All right. So next on our agenda is comments of administration. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, Joe Murphy, Deputy Chief of Staff. A uh, couple quick comments for you here. All, all positive things, but I'll try to be brief. Um, starting with uh, on Wednesday, April 20th, the Indiana Department of Natural Resources announced that the City of Lawrence would be receiving $1.7 million in grant funding through their Next Level Trails grant program. The uh, $1.7 million from the state will be supplemented by a $500,000 cash match from the City of Lawrence for the design and construction of trails in Lawrence. Uh, in this announcement, it, it represents the largest investment in Lawrence Trail's history, uh, in recent memory at least, um, so we're very excited about it. Uh, a little bit of detail about what will be funding. Um, the Next Level Trails grant program will be used to construct the top two trail segments identified as part of the 2018 City of Lawrence Bike and Pedestrian Master Plan. The first segment is Lee Road from East 59th Street to East 63rd Street, and the second segment is East 63rd Street from Lee, Ro Lee Road to Winona Drive. Uh, construction of the trail will span 1.2 miles and the planned route will be 10 foot wide to allow reasonable clearance for pedestrians, strollers, wheelchairs, and all forms of non-motorized vehicle transport. Um, through this development, pedestrian connectivity will be provided to Fort Harrison State Park, the Fort Golf Course, the Benjamin Harrison YMCA, Lawrence Civic Plaza, the Arts for Lawrence Cultural Campus, Flores Glen Elementary School, Fall Creek Valley Middle School, Ivy Tech Community College, Lee Road Park, Lawrence Community Park, the Watson Farm Subdivision, over 20 local restaurants and nearly 200 individual businesses. So it's, it's, got a, it's got a massive reach. 
In addition, it'll connect two great amenities that we already have in Lawrence in the trail department, the Lee Road Nature Trail, which was recently completed last year, as well as the existing Lee Road 56th Street uh, Roadside Trail, which is uh, currently 1.8 miles, which will reach our uh, total length of four miles in, in street side trail, or I'm sorry, three miles, my math was wrong there, three miles in uh, street side trail when it's all complete. Um, the city of Lawrence was one of 38 communities across the state of Indiana that received funding from the Next Level Trails grant program. In total, the DNR awarded $65.7 million in trail grants during the cycle, funding over 77 new miles of trail construction in Indiana. Um, and the, with the funding secured now, it's estimated that construction of this project will uh, begin in 2023 with construction complete by 24. Um, the second thing on my list is that uh, this past Saturday, we were hosting the uh, inaugural Fiesta Lawrence at the cultural campus, and it was a great success, and we appreciate all of you that did attend. Um, it was a free outdoor event, which included live music, entertainment, food, crafts, resources, and many community outreach efforts of our city toward Latino residents and visitors. Hundreds of the people, there was hundreds of people in attendance of all ages and backgrounds, um, and they were all there to celebrate and share and welcome the many diverse Latino cultures in our community. So that was a really special and exciting experience. And I want to give a special shout out to my colleague in the audience, Corey Korn, who uh, that's a brand new event this year. Um, as we mentioned, it was an inaugural event and she did a fantastic job putting that on and she deserves a lot of kudos for that. Um, in addition, on Saturday, in a more somber note, we did hold a brief memorial ceremony to honor and commemorate the life and ultimate sacrifice of fallen Lawrence firefighter Jeffrey Holt. Um, who passed away four years ago while on duty and service to the Lawrence community. And we just hope that um, his family continues to remain in your thoughts and uh, that he is always remembered in our community. Um, second to last here, uh, we also this past week hosted uh, the Greater Lawrence Cleanup and uh, over 100 City of Lawrence employees, volunteers, friends spread out to all sides of the city to uh, pick up nearly three tons of trash from our public areas and thoroughfares of our city, and I think that's probably just scratching the surface. Um, so we believe Lawrence is beautiful, and we're trying to lead by example and, and trying to keep it that way, but uh, we need our community members to partake with us. So I think we've got more news to come in that department um, in terms of organizing more events and local events throughout the community um, later this year. And then last but not least, we just continue to encourage everybody to visit the city's website, cityoflawrence.org. It's, it's really a, a host of great information about all facets of the city, uh, to mention a few events, finances, maps, contacts, and services. It's easy to find, easy to navigate, and our great internal team continues to update that regularly so it becomes more and more, it becomes a bigger wealth of knowledge every day it exists. So um, that's all I have. Thank you for your time, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. wonderful news, yeah. Congratulations to the, the city for the, the grant and the incoming trail. Okay. Uh, any citizens' comments tonight? No citizens' comments? All right, thank you. In that case, next on the item is adjournments, meeting adjourned.